Hello everyone. I will be discussing paper number 7, Technology of Milk and Milk Products. In that, I will be taking module number 20, Technology of Ice Cream and Frozen Desserts, part 1, that is Ingredients and Formulation. We already know that there are two different categories of the frozen delicacies. One is ice cream and another is the frozen desert. Ice cream, whenever we say, as per our legal standards, that is Food Safety and Standards Act, minimum 10% of milk fat has to be there, minimum 36% of total solids, including uh, sugar, that is sweeteners, are also included in that, is there. Whereas in case of any frozen desert, even if the fat content is less than 10, or even if we use some vegetable oils or fats as a source of fat, you have to term such product as frozen deserts. Now as this part 1 includes ingredients and formulation, ingredients in the preparation of ice cream and frozen deserts plays a very important vital role. There are two types of ingredients. The first one would be the dairy as the name says ice cream that means the cream we have used in the word ice cream so the dairy products ingredients definitely have a vital role but over and above the dairy ingredients we also have to utilize the role played by non dairy ingredients which are namely the sweeteners then we have the stabilizers we have emulsifiers coloring and flavoring agents and of course there would be some other optional ingredients which we'll be talking about later. Over and above the ingredients, the formulation of any ice cream and frozen desert is again a deciding factor which decides the flavor and quality of the resulting frozen desert or even the ice cream. If you look at any commercial ice cream factories, probably they will not be, be divulging their secret and that secret is nothing but the formulation of the ice cream mix or the frozen desert. Everyone can obtain a given ice cream freezer of a given company and freeze the mix in the same. Because that is the same ice cream freezer of a given company can be bought by any ice cream maker. However, using the dairy and the non-dairy ingredients, Whatever formulation we will be preparing will be the deciding factor in dictating the quality of the final resultant ice cream. This is what we are going to learn and discuss in this particular module. This slide shows the contribution of constituents obtained from the ingredients used in the formulation of an ice cream mix. Let us take the first component, the milk fat. The ingredients which can supply milk fat can be cream, can be white butter and also you can use anhydrous milk fat which you synonymously already probably know as butter oil. The second component is milk solids not fat. Generally in an ice cream we keep around 11 to 12.5 percent of MSNF that is milk solids not fat. Now this Milk, whatever you are using as the base in ice cream mix making, milk contains around 8.5 to even 9.5 percent SNF. We want to have 11.5 to 12.5. So, for that, we definitely need some concentrated source of MSNF that can furnish this much of MSNF in ice cream. The ingredients which can supply this MSNF in ice cream include skim milk powder. You can also use condensed skim milk. We can use condensed whole milk. But in this case, condensed whole milk, it is also going to contribute to the fat over and above the MSNF. So whatever cream, etc. probably if you were to use for the fat source, you will have to decrease their quantity based on the calculations in what. Another important ingredient which can be used to furnish the MSNF is sweetened condensed milk. Over and above furnishing the MSNF as well as little bit of fat, 
This sweetened condensed milk is also going to furnish around 42% of sugar coming from this ingredient. So if, for example, in a plain ice cream, you wanted to have 15% of total sugar as sweetener, you have to take into consideration the sugar also coming from the sweetened condensed milk to furnish the MSNF. Accordingly, you will be utilizing less quantity of the externally used sucrose. Some optional ingredients which can also contribute to the MSNF, but to some limited extent, you cannot use it 100%. And these include whey powder and or buttermilk powder. Remember, while utilizing these byproducts like whey powder or buttermilk powder, don't forget to utilize the normal sources of MSNF such as skim milk powder or condensed skim milk, but try to substitute some portion of that with this cheaper sources, again, which are coming from milk itself. Especially when you use the buttermilk powder, remember this contains a lot of milk fat globule membrane materials which comes into this while churning of cream into butter. Now this milk fat global membrane contains lecithin as one of the natural emulsifying substance. So when utilizing this buttermilk powder as a MSNF source, probably you can reduce the amount of emulsifying agents which you will be utilizing along with the stabilizers. So this will be helping you in emulsion, better emulsion and as such homogenization is already going to be done but this will definitely aid in emulsion. The next one is water component, especially using any powdered product, dairy product such as skim milk powder or whole milk powder. In that case for reconstitution to the normal solids or whatever 11-12% we need, you will definitely need water and particularly if you are using skim milk or whole milk, there is no need to use water because both of these already contains water in them. Sweetener is the next component and there are an N number of sweeteners, but the usual one and the majority of the ice cream manufacturers would tend to use sucrose probably as the sole source of sweetener. However, it is always beneficial in certain cases, particularly for some specialized ice cream mixes, to utilize some alternative sweeteners, which includes number one, the corn syrup solids, which are actually derived from starch by limited hydrolysis. And you can also use liquid sugars. And these liquid sugars particularly are very convenient to use in a dairy plant, since they can be pumped directly from the tank in which the liquid sugar is there into the formulation tank where you are going to mix all the ingredients. Because when you are going to add the crystalline sugar, probably you will need some agitation and little of the temperature which has to be around 40-45 degree for it to dissolve properly. When using a liquid sugar, I think you can know what convenience it can confer. The next component is stabilizer and or emulsifier. Usually we tend to use both in ice creams, whereas emulsifier is not needed in manufacture of frozen deserts, where probably fat we decrease it or even we probably utilize fat from some other sources like vegetable oils and fats. The examples of stabilizers include sodium alginate, guar gum, starch, even others like carboxymethyl, cellulose, Many other gums like locust bean gum, gum karaya, gum gatti. Examples of emulsifier includes glycerol monosterates, polysorbates, lecithin which I told naturally present in buttermilk powder and also you can obtain lecithin from soya bean as a vegetarian source can also be used as a very good emulsifier in preparation of ice cream and frozen deserts. Now next we come into the composition of dairy ingredients used in ice cream manufacture. I told you once we have decided what composition of ice cream mix we already decided to prepare, 
Now you will be utilizing several dairy ingredients in order to obtain the desired amount of fat and MSNF, milk solids not fat, in the final ice cream. For that, we need to know the initial composition of each and every dairy ingredient, especially its fat as well as MSNF. For some isolated or specialized products like sweetened condensed milk, we should also know what is the amount of sweetener involved in that so that we can formulate it properly. So this table, whatever is given on this slide, gives you again the composition of all the ingredients or some of the ingredients which you can choose out of this as per your convenience and as per your need for preparing the ice cream mix. For full cream milk, that is your milk containing good amount of fat and SNF like buffalo milk standards, around 6% fat and 9% SNF. It can vary also, it can be greater than 6 and greater than 9 also. Skim milk, generally less than 0.1% fat and I think nearly 88 .8 to 9.2% SNF. Whole milk powder, very readily available, having a very good shelf life at ambient conditions, should have around 26 to 27% milk fat and at least 70% of MSNF. Skim milk powder, now this has got a more better stability at ambient temperature compared to whole milk powder because it is literally lacking in fat and hence any deteriorative reactions related to lipid oxidation does not take place here. Now this should have roughly around 1.2 to 1.5 percent milk fat and 96 percent of MSNF. Rather the highest source of MSNF you can ever think in any of the dairy ingredients which are conventionally being used. White butter is another ingredient, a fat rich ingredient wherein the fat content may range 80 plus and it may be around 84 to depending on the moisture content of the butter. Of course, it has got around 1% of MSNF, but you may neglect it during the formulation and calculation of the ice cream mix. In case of sweetened condensed milk, as per the FSSA requirements, it should have minimum 9% of fat and minimum of around 22% SNF. Now, this sweetened condensed milk will automatically contain sugar in that, which helps in preservation of that canned product at room temperature and it can contain something around 42.5 to 45 percent of sugar. Remember as I told you earlier you will have to take this into consideration while finding out the amount of the sugar which you will be using it to prepare the ice cream mix. And lastly certain optional ingredients that is the very important byproducts obtained from milk such as whey powder and buttermilk powder which can be used as a part substitution of the conventional milk solids like condensed skim milk or skim milk powder. This whey powder can have less than 1% of fat and has got SNF around 85%. Buttermilk powder usually has little bit higher fat around 4.5 and SNF is 84%. Now just because of this little bit around higher milk fat content compared to skim milk powder, Again, the storage stability of buttermilk powder may not be as high as that of skim milk powder, but definitely greater than that of whole milk powder. In the next slide, we can see a few classes of ice cream has been given with its fat, total solids, over and, and relative cost. Now, if you see the class of ice cream, whatever we have given here, Number one is the standard ice cream, the second category with a premium and the third category a super premium. Whenever I am referring to the word premium, in this class of ice cream, the milk fat content is going up. Remember the price of such ice cream, premium ice cream will also go up because fat is the costliest milk component. But then people love it, those who don't have any problems of coronary heart disease, obesity or diabetes, again would like to love it because of the taste, the richness which a milk fat confers. So 
let us see the fat content again as we go that is from standard 10 to 12 percent to a super premium there it will be 15 to 18 percent milk fat the premium would have the intermediate fat of around 12 to 15 percent remember again when we increase the fat content of ice cream we should decrease the msnf content of course taking into consideration the minimum amount of protein milk protein the standard has already specified but we should try to decrease the msnf in the formulation so that we can restrict the ts to a desirable level so as i told you let us see the total solids as we go further that is from standard to super premium ice cream the ts content which was in standard minimum say around 36 percent may go to greater than 40 percent in super premium because of the increased fat content even one more thing important is as we increase the fat content the sugar content the sweetener content has to be again slightly raised by about one to one and a half percent higher the fat higher the sugar content to balance the sweetness the fattiness of the fat is balanced by the increased sugar content now look at a very important part overrun what is overrun overrun means an increase in the volume of ice cream over the volume of the ice cream mix we had already prepared prior to freezing and whipping because of the whipping that entails during the freezing process in the freezer be it batch ice cream freezer or continuous ice cream freezer the volume of the ice cream is going to increase however the weight per volume will tend to decrease depending on the volume increase so you can see here in a standard ice cream we go for about 95 to 100 percent overrun however with increase in further fat content there will be more chance of demulsification of fat leading to butter like granules coming in the uh, ice cream which comes as a defect and hence you should go for keeping reasonable amount of over and lower than what you would do in a standard with increase in the fat content so for a premium ice cream you should restrict the over and to around 60 to 90 percent and in case of super premium restrict it to 25 to 50 percent only next as i told you based on the cost the relative cost higher the fat content higher would be the cost because milk fat is the costliest component of milk so super premium ice cream would definitely ask for more cost compared to the standard one the next slide you are looking at is formulation of few ice cream types in this particular table i have tried to give the formulation of three main types of ice cream the number one is a plain ice cream for instance a vanilla ice cream number two a fruit ice cream for instance a strawberry ice cream or a mango ice cream or a lychee based ice cream and the third one is chocolate ice cream taking help of cocoa powder or chocolate liquor as a flavoring in ice cream if you see the milk fat content there should be minimum 10 in all of them as per the standards food safety and standards act the msnf content you can decrease a little bit particularly in case of fruit and chocolate ice cream since the total solids in these two ice creams will be more because of the increased sugar content and even some ts coming from either the fruit or even coming from the cocoa powder and hence the milk snf for plain ice cream is kept around 12 whereas for fruit and chocolate ice cream you can keep around 10.5 the sucrose content as i told earlier in plain ice cream 15 percent is more than enough however in fruit ice cream because if you are especially using uh, an acidic fruit with a low ph you would definitely require about two percent higher that is 17 percent sweetener and in case of chocolate ice cream just because of the little bit of bitterness coming from the cocoa you need to again balance the little bit of bitterness and for that again you will be using some little higher quantum of sugar making it around 17 percent with regard to stabilizer and emulsifier together the quantum required in plain ice cream would be greater as such together also as per standards 
legal standards. Maximum 0.5 is permitted. So in plain ice cream, you can go for 0.4, even little less can be used. Whereas in case of fruit ice cream and chocolate ice cream, you can go still further lower because of the higher TS and the solids coming from the cocoa. If we see regarding the flavoring, in a plain ice cream, you require the least less than 1%. It is approximately 1 ml per liter of ice cream mix. And that will again depend on the inherent strength of the flavoring in the whatever flavor you are going to use. Whereas in case of fruit ice cream, depending on the type of fruit pulp we are using, for instance, if you use a mango pulp, again, depending on its intensity of the flavor, as well as the total soluble solids. Uh, an average mango would have something around 20% total soluble solids. This would be needed roughly around 18 to 20% by weight of the ice cream mix to prepare a mango ice cream. For any other flavor, for instance, strawberry, again, you may probably require 12 to 15% by weight. The third category, that is the chocolate ice cream, would need addition of around 2.5 to 3% of the cocoa powder or even a chocolate liquor can be used. And the color also will be, the brown color will be given by the chocolate liquor or the cocoa powder itself. The next is the coloring. As I told you in chocolate ice cream, the brown color is already conferred by the cocoa powder or the chocolate liquor itself. The same in case of fruit ice cream, whatever amount of pulp fruit you will be using, that will be conferring to the natural color. However, if you feel that this color is of lower intensity than what a consumer would desire, you can add some externally permitted colors. And that would be around 0.5%. And in a plain ice cream, you would definitely need to add corresponding appropriate coloring. For the total solids, if you see, for a plain ice cream, it would be around something around 38 to 39. Fruit ice cream, it will be around 40 to 42. And for chocolate ice cream, because of the presence of the higher sugar and the cocoa powder, it will be around 41 or 42 percent total solids. You can see in this picture, it is a photograph of mango ice cream. Mango ice cream comes under the category fruit ice cream. Other ice, ice cream categories include plain ice cream, chocolate ice cream, soft serve ice cream, frozen novelties. The one which you are seeing on the PowerPoint is a mango ice cream. In this, we will be utilizing the natural pulp of mango as a flavoring in preparation of mango ice cream. This particular pulp, again, whenever we are extracting from mango, Depending on the variety of the mango, the TSS, that is total soluble solids, of the pulp is going to vary. For instance, if it is a Alfonso mango pulp, it will, may have 20 to 25 percent TSS. However, if it is a Totapuri mango, it may have 14.5 to 15 percent total soluble solids. Now, depending on the need, roughly in a mango flavored ice cream, you would need to add about 15 to 20 percent of the mango pulp in order to obtain the desired mango ice cream. The color which is desired in this mango ice cream, that is yellow or little of orange tinge, will be given already by the pulp which we are using at such a good level, that is 15 to 25 percent. However, remember two things are very important. Mango pulp being acidic in nature, its pH is low. We have to add this mango pulp only to a partly frozen ice cream mix already containing the milk solids. If this temperature would have been higher, that means you don't freeze it partly and then add the mango pulp, the milk proteins which are there in the milk solids will tend to get precipitated, leading to certain defects like uh, uh, easy meltdown, it will take less time to melt and you may even get a curdy meltdown when the ice cream is allowed to melt in a say given petri dish to look for the melting quality. Now this is again uh, an ice cream which utilizes cocoa powder 
or even you can use the chocolate liquor from which again cocoa powder is made up this has been used as one of the flavoring in ice cream and which is liked by majority of the consumers to give an example according to one survey chocolate ice cream or chocolate flavoring comes as the second best flavor which is liked by most of the people world over the first being vanilla now in order to prepare this chocolate ice cream you may need about 2.5 to 3.5 percent of the cocoa powder however remember one thing this cocoa powder whatever you are adding can add some bitterness because depending on the variety some cocoa obviously have some degree of bitterness in order to balance that bitterness to certain extent we need to increase the sugar content in a normal plain ice cream around 15 percent sugar is taken in this case this chocolate ice cream will be utilizing something around 17 percent two percent more now that will be balancing the bitterness of ice cream and you will get little bit of bitterness and very good amount of sweetness which will be liked by the consumers another thing to be kept in mind this additional two percent of sugar and additional three percent of the cocoa solids will increase more than five percent solids in the resultant ice cream mix now this increase in the solids can probably make it a heavy soggy bodied ice cream so remember to decrease the amount of stabilizer if at all you want to use it see that you use less quantity of the stabilizer in this case since the total solids is good enough to confer the desired body and texture so this is what is and the color desired is obviously the brown and which will be automatically given either by the cocoa powder or by the chocolate liquor whichever you are utilizing it as a flavoring in chocolate ice cream taken on a wafer cone or you may collect it in a container glass container or whatsoever and then give it to the consumer for consumption now if you see i have given two types of formulation of a soft serve ice cream one is without use of corn syrup solids and the right hand side with using corn syrup solids corn syrup solids is obtained from maize the corn word is nothing but maize whatever starch is present in the maize parched hydrolysis of that would give you the corn syrup solids which is less sweeter than sucrose and helps in increasing the body of the ice cream and even more smoother because of the increase in the total solids so if you see the one without corn syrup solids the milk fat is 10 msnf is around 12.5 sucrose is 13 percent no corn syrup solids because this one i am deliberately telling it it is without corn syrup solids the stabilizer and emulsifier together around 0.35 percent and total solids making 36 if you see now the right hand side column formulation with corn syrup solids again the milk fat and msnf rather msnf i have decreased by 0.5 percent since the corn syrup solids is going to add to 4 percent total solids sucrose i have decreased because the sweetener sucrose and the added corn syrup solids which is less sweet but definitely contribute to the sweetness together 14 percent will be conferring the same sweetness with 13 percent sucrose would be have been contributing in the first one category without css the stabilizer and emulsifier together you can add the same which you use with in the without css that is 0.35 percent and the total solids would come to around 36.5 percent so these are the two types of formulation I have indicated which can be very well used in preparation of a good quality frozen ice cream soft serve however the flavorings and the colorings have definitely to be added based on the customer preference the next is the formulation of a sherbet mix now this sherbet is not very popular in india however if you refer to any good advanced book on ice cream and frozen deserts i think it is one of the very good frozen dessert which can have a very good share in the market 
if you try to launch this in our Indian market too. In this case, the water content is quite high. However, the total solids is just because of the higher amount of the total sweetener content. And milk solids content is decreased. So the cost of the production of this sherbet frozen desert would be lower because of the lower milk solids. And if you see in the table, the milk fat and SNF together makes 5% of total solids, total milk solids, out of which 1.5% is contributed by milk fat, 3.5% is contributed by milk SNF. And you can use even some of the ice cream mix which you have and in your ice cream factory to contribute to 5% total solids in this particular sherbet mix. Sucrose, in this case, since we are going to use some citrus fruit pulp and fruit juices, which are very important for the flavoring on sherbet, the sucrose content will be higher, that is 24%. Add to this the corn syrup solids, which are less in sweet, but definitely contributes to the total solids, 6%. Total 24 plus 6 makes 30, will be the 30% total sweetener. Citric acid as 50% solution is used to have the desired low pH. As such, the citrus fruit juices are having potent in citric acid. You can add a little bit. It will be very tart in taste and people love that. So, we will be adding around 0.7% in the formulation. And I told you, rest of the thing is water, which is 64%, totally making 100%. This is frozen again in a freezer as same as ice cream, but whipped to a lower overrun. You have to restrict overrun to around 30 to 35 percent only, unlike around 95 to 100 percent for a ice cream. And then you have to just pack it in a individual packages, harden it, and then finally give it in the retail store. Hello everyone. We have already I have dealt with the technology of ice cream and frozen deserts, particularly part one, that is ingredients and formulation. I have shown you, especially in this, thrived on particularly three main varieties, that is plain ice cream, a fruit ice cream, a chocolate ice cream, other includes a nut ice cream, a probiotic ice cream, frozen yogurt, sherbets and ices, which are other categories of frozen desert and many more. The ingredients which are being used in formulating any ice cream and frozen desert have their own functional role to play. And other than the stabilizers and emulsifiers, which are very important functional ingredients, the flavoring and coloring too play a very important role. For instance, if you want to have a ice cream flavor for the entire month of 30 days, you can even come out with 30 different flavors for the consumers to enjoy one day a month. Similarly, you can also combine the flavorings one or two or three together to have a combo flavor which people would love each of them to be combined together and have it. Next, we saw the formulation of the ice cream. Now, balancing of any formulation for ice cream or even frozen desert is a very important thing to be adhered to. Precaution has to be taken so that each and everything, the one we wanted to balance is number one, the fat and sugar, the acid and the sugar, the fat and SNF, because fat and SNF has got an inverse relation. If you increase the fat, for instance, in a super premium ice cream, you will have to decrease the MSNF so that the total solids does not, or particularly the total milk solids and the TS does not exceed 40, beyond which it tends to become defective like heavy and soggy bodied ice cream. Now, this formulation is the one which any ice cream factory would like to patent or keep their trade secret. They would not like to divulge this secret because this is what is going to give them the final quality for which any people are ready to buy their product at any cost they are commanding. So with this, we already saw that all the ingredients used, even the formulation used are very, are very good determinants 
for a good quality ice cream and frozen desserts that are enjoyed by literally all sections of the society. Thank you all.